Katie Brooke grew up on the land and still lives on the land in the Northern Rivers District of New South Wales. She released a self-titled EP in 2020 and her debut album, Sticks, Stones and Stories, last year. She now has a really lovely new single, completely new single, not on the album, Too Far Down, and we're going to talk about that and a couple of other things, I think. Hi, Katie. Hi, Sophie. Thank you so much for having me. Pleasure to have you because I have listened to your album many times and also oh. really loving the new song. Um, but I'm going to start with your Instagram bio, which says that you were a cowgirl before it was cool. <laughs> Please tell us about your cowgirl past. <laughs> yeah, well, I grew up in the country and I guess I say before it was cool because when I was going to high school, I used to get picked on for being this hillbilly geeky country girl who listens to 90s country and it was just really not normal back then we didn't have cmc fest and all of these really cool country things so yeah it's very cool now which is really good because it means you know maybe i'm finally cool <laughs> but yeah i grew up in a tiny little town called mumblegum and i still live here now i moved away for some time right. but i decided you know Mum and dad still have the cattle property here and my brother and sister-in-law are involved as well. So the whole family are here. And so we have our own little slice of paradise just around the corner from the big farm with our own little block and some highland steers. Uh, and yeah, you know, I'm still involved with the cattle sometimes if they need me, which is really nice. And it's just the perfect place for me to be and to raise a little family as well. Yeah. So you moved away for a while. Was that to try city life? A little bit. Yeah, I did a little bit of city life. I did the Gold Coast thing because it's our closest city. Um, and I did Tamworth for four years, which is probably the closest to home for me. Um, and I did a lot of like solo touring, just cover gigs and pub gigs and um, just yeah, developed my country music side. I did a lot with horses out there as well, a lot of horse riding and stuff like that. And then thought, yeah, no, I'll go home. <laughs> but it's always <laughs> it's always second home, though. I love going to Tamworth. Right. And did yeah. you, was that partly because you were interested in becoming a performing artist and you thought, okay, well, I might as well go to the country music capital? Yeah, definitely. That was that was part of it. And then um, I also have a lot of family out there as well because my dad's originally from Coonabarabran. So we've still got family all spread out west out that way. Okay. Now so we've covered your cowgirl pass, your musical pass. So that's a little bit of it. But when did you actually start getting involved in music? Was it an, an instrument first or singing? singing first and I had songs like all through my primary school years and I just pestered my parents constantly for singing lessons and I said I just really want to be a singer that's what I want to do and um, I'd learn all of the the songs I'd open up the leaflet I miss that so much <laughs> I used to get the cd and you'd open up and read the lyrics and I'd sing along and I learned nearly all of the Lee Kernighan songs and I sang them to mum and she goes yeah okay not bad we'll send you to lessons and my vocal teacher was like, yeah, definitely, this is something. So we just kept developing that. And um, then I picked up the acoustic guitar when I was about 13 mm -hmm. and loved it. And, yeah, that just kind of all flowed. And then I kind of grew up in the industry. I did the academy at 16 um, and then the senior one at 18. And I was opening up the Jim Haynes Bush Breakfast Show at Tamworth Country mm -hmm. Music Festival and singing on that when I was about uh, 17 and mm -hmm. I remember I think the first time I walked a red carpet was when I was 16 at the Golden Guitars with Amos Morris mm -hmm. and yeah so it was really nice to kind of have those teen years as an introduction a really nice gentle introduction as to what it would be like. I'm intrigued that you say that the academy is gentle because from what I've seen which is like <laughs> I just saw the junior academy a little bit this year like that is intense um and I know that's that's one week and the senior academy is I think two weeks long yeah. and still very intense but yeah it doesn't seem so gentle <laughs> yeah I guess not maybe it's just normal to me but that was a long time ago too so it could have changed a lot as well right. and it probably has changed a lot um it was intense but um I loved it so much just being immersed in music every day yeah, and, and I'm also interested that you went back to the Senior Academy only two years after the Junior Academy. Uh, and for anyone who doesn't know, it's not an automatic thing. It's not like you just say, oh, I want to go and you can go. You have to be yeah. selected to go. So given that you do learn a lot in that that Junior Academy, what do you think Senior Academy brought to you or, or why did you want to go so so soon after Junior Academy? I think after the junior, you you want to, you set out for that because you love it so much and you're so inspired and you're so immersed in it. You go, oh, I need to do the, the senior now for sure. So 
hands down, I definitely wanted to go back and do it more intensively. And it's, it really is just that it's just the grown up version and it's just the next step. Um, and I just love being around all of the, you know, the, the mentors and I had Lynn Botel as my mentor and I actually just went back and did one of Lynn's songwriting retreats on the weekend. So it's been 15 years since she was my mentor, full circle moment, worked with her again on the weekend, wrote a song with her. Um, but I just wanted to work with those people and learn from them. And um, it's just this new level of inspiration. So was Junior Academy the first time you had written songs or did you bring some songs with you? I can't remember the junior one actually, but I think so. Um, it was probably more covers then, but I definitely wrote a song at the Senior Academy and was much more involved in songwriting by the time I was 18. And I think I had a lot more to write about by that age as well naturally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A few little things like starting to be an adult, for example. Um, <laughs> now on your 2020 EP, there is a song called Dreamer's Tired Mind, which you wrote with Russ Crook. Being an artist does require you to commit to a dream. So I'm interested in whether it's hard to keep the faith when you have that dreamer's tired mind. Yeah, that's exactly what that song's about. It's just that exhaustion, that pure exhaustion sometimes that comes from having such big dreams and such big goals and for a long, long time. So that was, I wrote Dreamers Tired Mine in my late 20s. So by that time, I'd really been in the thick of it, been sick of it, <laughs> wanted to give up 20 times, started again 20 more times. So I think that was just that. And it really kind of was this metaphorical journey through my music career mm -hmm. to that point, um, wrapped in sort of like a very whimsical sound. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, that's still one of my favourite songs, Dreamers Tied Mine. But, yeah, we keep the faith. I think when you when you do grow up in the industry and you just, you've done it for so long, you mm -hmm. can't turn your back on things. So. Yeah. I'm still here. <laughs> you definitely are um, because you have a new single, um, Too Far Down, which is also written with Russ slash known as Rusty. Yeah. So that is a long collaboration now. When did that begin, that collaboration? Yeah, so that was just me. Well, they are all mine, but Rusty's my producer and he's the producer that really transforms the musical side of things. So I do write lyric and music myself, but then, yeah, Rusty puts all of the other elements of production in um, and he has a very, very large part in everything. But, yeah, we've been working together since the very start, since that first EP, and I think we started recording that in 2017 or 18 and uh, right through did an album, and now we've got this new project and it's just so funny now there's he's got two babies and I've got a baby and it's just we've grown up and the music's grown up and I feel like this track this new single does feel like a level up for me as an artist and a different kind of direction so yeah I'm really proud of it it's it's quite bittersweet I mean it's a, it is a there's every time I listen to it, I just think oh there's just these moments that are really poignant in it so tell us what it's about yeah, this has been a difficult question. That's what happens when you release a single. You've got to talk so much about it. And it's a song that I find it really difficult to talk about. But it's only because I didn't really think about it much. It was just such an intuitive project, this one. I just literally started writing these words. Obviously, it was really embedded in that subconscious mind. And uh, and then I went, oh, okay, let's try and put some melody to this and have a play with it. And it just all happened so quickly and so naturally. But, yeah, it is about comparison and it's about standing your own ground not dipping too low below beneath the waters you know trying to stay in your own essence as an artist as a human and that's the thing this song I think can be taken interpreted a few different ways um and even when I listen to it I go oh you know it can be interpreted that way and it's got that really the second verse is probably one of my favorite pieces that I've written and I love to kind of keep it as a little um inspirational piece for myself I think when I'm thinking about my career and my life now I really like to listen back to those lines when you were recording the vocal was there a particular feeling that arose rather than a feeling you set out to channel if that makes sense yeah, that's, see, I'm so in my head when I'm recording vocals. It's that real, you go in and you go, oh, well, this is going to be, you know, everyone's going to hear this. It's going to be out there in the world forever. This is so much pressure. So, but for this song, I think, because it's so natural, I don't know, there's something about this song that just fits my vocal. Mm -hmm. um, and I just went in and went, just clear your mind and don't think about the pressure. Don't think about who's going to hear it. 
just sing it the way it's supposed to be sung. And I think it only took two or three goes, probably didn't even take that. We just thought, oh, we'll do an extra one now just in case. And um, it was very natural. The whole process of this song was just so organic, which is really nice. And as I said at the top, it is a brand new song. It's not from the album. And you know, it's a pretty quick turnaround. So I'm wondering if yeah. you felt like the album was a bit of an end of a chapter, like that that was a document of a time and and you were ready to you were obviously ready to move on because you have a brand new song. Yeah. And I think that's me too. I like fresh. I love freshness. And I think the album didn't really get much of a much limelight or not really a lot happened with the album and I think that's just where I was as an artist at that time I was 20 weeks pregnant when I released the album and there was that do I release it or do I wait till you know I have the baby but um I thought no let's just get this album out because people will circle back so Mm -hmm. The, I'm all about the future you know it doesn't matter if it's not being recognized or received the way I'd like it to at the moment because time will pass and people will come back to it and they have they've been listening to the new single so now mm. the album's getting the streams and the listens and the recognition so yeah um it is but it is a good good time to start a fresh chapter there are a lot of things happening in my life that feel different now and to how it felt um during the debut album I went through a lot of life changes um, I don't even think I had met my partner. You know, none of that was kind of on the scene. That album is, yeah, old stories now. Right. Okay. <laughs> and some of your songs musically have this quite languid feeling to them. Um, I'm thinking, I mean, even the current single, I think there's a there's this really languid sense to it. So I'm I'm interested in which artists you you are listening to who may influence your sound. Yeah, I and I listen to such a, a wide range too. Um, but I think. I'm very traditionally driven. Like I love traditional country music. I grew up on country music. I didn't know there was another genre till I started going to primary school and I went, oh, <laughs> there's, there's the Spice Girls and there's everything. Um, but, yeah, I think it starts traditionally. But I do love that pop element as well. But see, Alison Krauss mm-hmm. and that that edge of bluegrass um, element kind of always grabs me. Mm-hmm. So I think too far down kind of you can hear that I've been listening to even the Petersons I know they do covers but you know they've got those beautiful pure vocals that are very bluegrass and um, the way Rusty does the backing vocals as well and everything it just kind of melded so well together Um, so yeah there's a lot of alt music I'd say that you can tell you know has come through this song. Now on the album there is a song called Cosmic Cowgirl and you're Bio on Instagram mentions that you are a mystic. I would love to hear more about this part of your life. Yeah, it's a big part of my life. It's, it's I guess, yeah, who I am as a person, my essence. It's something grown over time. Uh, when I was in high school, I got my first tarot deck. Wow. And funnily enough, I went to a very Catholic high school and I loved singing in church and all of that as well. So it's been nice to kind of embrace all those elements. But, yeah, very much so go towards that kind of mystic edge and I love um you know I'm very in tune with nature I love cycles and the cycles of the moon and astrology absolutely a geek for astrology if anyone starts to tell me what star sign they are I get really excited (laughs) (laughs) um and yeah it's just a part of my life you know I got the little altar and I always try and infuse those manifestations and little rituals into my daily life and yeah, I think it's nice just to have that little bit of magic, especially when you are a creative. Yeah, and being in tune with the rhythms of the earth and the moon and it's, can tie very much into creativity. There are some people who do believe yeah. in creating according to the moon cycle. And yeah. uh, I'm wondering if you go, if you, well, if you've become aware that there are certain rhythms that may influence creativity. For example, when I've taught yoga regularly, I've noticed that around solstices and equinoxes, people get really tired. And, I, and my theory was that that it's just the body's moving into, like the earth's moving into a new phase, the human body goes with it. And I would just find if people came to class, they would just be really blah. And so I never used to push anything in those times. So someone, well, for you, actually, I was going to say someone like you, but you specifically being aware of these sorts of things, have you become aware of how those different cycles affect your creative output? Yeah, that's so interesting. I love that. And I love hearing about that. And I do actually personally feel like it is quite heavy energy when there is 
I know we just went through an eclipse mm -hmm. not long ago, a season, and then that tied in with um, like we're in Scorpio season now, which is a quite heavy water season. I do find with this when it's in the sun sign of the month, so we're in Scorpio at the moment, it's a watery sign. It's quite a heavy one. Um, but it's funny, when we're in Leo season, so around August, I write really well. So there's okay. something about Leo sun and the sun is the ruler of Leo too. So I don't know what it is. And that is a very creative thing, but I write a lot. I mean, I write all the time, but mm -hmm. I'll just find I'll be smashing the songs out all the time. So I'll, I'll um, pay more attention to it though in the future. Yeah. Eclipse seasons are heavy too. Um, it's, it's, I think yeah. always think it's worth people being aware of that. And anyone who says, oh, well, that can't affect us. I always think, mm -hmm. well, we live on this planet. We are part of a solar system. We're, in, you know, we're part of a universe that, how can we not be affected yeah. by these things? Yeah, there's some amazing scientists proving all of that now, which is really great to listen to. It's probably actually a lot beyond me um, and beyond just the, you know, sun sign, but there is so much to astrology. It's amazing. So in terms of your own creative practice, are you someone who has learned to trust your intuition when it comes to whether a song's going to work? So do you actually feel whether it's flowing and or feel when it's stuck and think, well, I'm going to honor that feeling rather than pushing through mm -hmm. something, for example, that's not that's not flowing, shall we say? Yeah, and that's such a great question because that's what I'm working through as a writer at the moment and being on retreat um, at the She Songwriting Retreat on the weekend. Lynn kind of teaches us techniques when we're stuck. Okay, how do we work through this? Whereas I'd usually go, oh, I'm not going to try and push this any further because it's going to sound really forced. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of a dance. So, yeah, you can definitely keep working on it and work through it, but it's also nice to just let it sit for some time because sometimes songs, the concept and everything can be lined up and the outline and the bones of it can kind of be there, but maybe it's not really meant to manifest yet maybe it's for in two years time when I can finish it in a different way so yeah I, I do work more on the ones that intuitively just feel great they've come to me they're laid out here I love singing them that's how I generally know if I pick up my guitar I go what do I want to play today and mm -hmm. the songs that I gravitate towards and really want to sing that's usually what I'll take and demo and off we go with it and that was too far down like too far down I just could sing over and over and over again yeah, right. And it suggests when you're saying a song, you know, maybe it's for two years' time, that you're good at being patient or if you weren't good at being patient, you've learned to be patient. Yes, yeah, sometimes. But sometimes <laughs> I have a song. I do have one at the moment that I did work hard on and it's worked out okay. Um, and I just think, I love this concept. I think it's really what's happening now, so I need to write about it now and that could be next year's single. So we'll see. Right. Now, speaking of next year, um, well, speaking of the last eve of this year, you are playing a New Year's Eve gig and it sounds like it could be quite a big one. So whereabouts yes. is it? Oh, amazing. I'm excited already. I'm just itching to get there. But I'm going up to Townsville for the Buckwild Country Barn Sessions. Okay. <laughs> so there's a great lineup. Um, Zach and George, Bella McKenzie, Katrina Burgoyne, Max oh. Jackson. I'm trying to think of all the amazing, oh. so many amazing artists. And just a fun bunch. They're going to be a, such a fun bunch to share New Year's with. And Buckwild Country, it's such an amazing country brand. I've been working with them, oh, like wearing their clothes and creating songs even for some of their campaigns for the last few years. Right. And uh, it's just going to be great to see them. And it's a real family event. It's There's a cocktail making class and there's stuff for the kids. So, yeah, I might even be a taste tester for the <laughs> cocktail making class. Seems reasonable. <laughs> Extend my services for the night. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm yeah. so excited. <laughs> and you are returning to, to your former home of Tamworth for the Country Music Festival, a couple of yes. gigs there by the sound of it. Yeah, so a few little appearances and then I've got my two main gigs. Um, I had two venues in mind that I really wanted to do. That was the Welder's Dog and the Press Basement Bar and I've got them Thursday and Friday afternoon, four and five o'clock. So that's going to be, I'm so excited. It's just going to be so much fun. Can't wait to sing the new songs to everyone. They are both great venues. So people can get along and check you out there. But in the meantime, we have the single Too Far Down and more music to look forward to, it sounds like. So yes. Katie, it's been lovely to talk to you. Thanks for your time. Thank you so much, Sophie. I appreciate it.